Turbo Conquering Mega Eagle. In this video, I'm going to show you my modifications to the hand crank, its shaft, and the associated bearings and cams of my Chinese boot patch sewing machine. <clears throat> the original setup consists of a plastic knob on the cast iron cam wheel. This operates the needle arm and bobbin drive and also drives a shaft. The shaft is threaded and uses a nut to secure the cam wheel. The cam wheel is located on the shaft by a keyway cut in the wheel and a pin in the shaft which is a, a terrible fit and allows significant play between the shaft and the wheel. The shaft runs through an unshielded ball bearing which was heavily contaminated with factory dirt when the machine arrived. Two cams are mounted on the shaft which operate the foot. The tail end of the shaft sits in a plain cast iron pedestal which is a millimeter oversized permitting excessive movement and binding of the ball bearing. I started off by ordering two 12mm ID sealed bearings and the length of ground round silver steel. I think this is known as drill rod in the States. It's a, it's a relatively high carbon steel basically. And made a flange, welded the flange to the new shaft and trued it up on the lathe. I then drilled and tapped the flange and cam wheel to take M6 screws and secured the two components together. In order to install a second steel bearing in the place of the cast iron bearing and support the tail end of the shaft, I needed a new mount. Using a makeshift crucible in my forge, I melted down some old brass fittings including the taps for the kitchen sink and poured them into an offcut of steel. I also cast some round brass for other parts of the machine at the same time. On the lathe I squared up the brass and bored a hole in it to take the bearings. Then I spun it through 90 degrees in the chuck and profiled the outside of the pedestal. I then sanded and buffed with a buffing wheel. The original plastic knob was horrible and way too small for my massive mitts. I lodged the M6 to M8, turned the shaft and put an M8 male thread on one end with a M6 female hole in the other. The shaft was coated in a mixture of methylated spirits and talcum powder to prevent oxidisation during the hardening process. Following hardening, the shaft was polished. I turned two brass top hats and bored a hole through a piece of mahogany, then bonded the top hats into the wood and turned them to shape using my pillar drill. The knob was secured to the shaft using 
an M6 screw and a small length of pipe, the pipe being there to prevent the screw from gripping the knob. Having installed both new bearings, one in the frame of the machine and one in my new brass pedestal, the shaft was used to align the two bearings, uh, with the pedestal being bedded to the machine using an epoxy putty. Due to the irregularities in the in the machine itself, uh, I found this to be the, the most, uh, most satisfactory solution. The original shaft was well undersized. Uh, it was floating in the in the original ball bearing. My new shaft is precision ground, 12 millimeters. Um, but I found that the cams required reaming in order to to fit them over onto the new shaft. You could use a drill, but uh, reaming gives a, a much much tighter fit. Before starting work on the machine, only one corner of the uh, of the arm was contacting the cam, and this has resulted in um, unnecessary friction and damage to the cam itself. I reworked the arm. This is dealt with in a separate video. For the cam, however, I polished the friction surfaces, and using an M3 screw and a brass tab, I made a felt wiper. The felt is an excellent way of maintaining an oil supply to the cam and follower and it is a method used on sewing machines um, probably still to this day but certainly commonly over the last hundred years. Having got everything back together, turning the machine now requires much less effort. It feels less shaky and uh, and I'm certain it will last a lot longer than it would have done if I hadn't modified it. Removing the iron bearing also means less oil required and, uh, and less, less black dirt produced. Even with limited tools, most people will be able to replace the front bearing just with a, a hammer and punch. And rather than discarding the iron bearing, as I did, uh, this could be drilled out in order to take a, a bushing. A bronze bush, similar to the oil light bushes I used on the arms. Again, see the, see the video I made on the arms. And bedding the embedding the pedestal in place with epoxy as as I did on my brass pedestal in order to ensure correct alignment although you, you might have to enlarge the holes in the base And even, even if you have limited tools, you can still bed the flywheel to the shaft, again using using an epoxy putty or something like that, or, or silver solder if available, um, just by removing the wheel from the shaft, cleaning everything thoroughly with a, with a solvent such as acetone or, or MEK, um, applying some metal putty and then bolting the wheel back on and this will prevent any of the um, any of the, the movement that um, that I was certainly experiencing with the, with this machine and and if you don't do this I'm pretty sure eventually the um, the wheel constantly working backwards and forwards on that shaft will result in the pin coming loose and the whole lot falling apart 
total cost for these modifications were around £10, I reckon, with the bearings costing £2.50 for the ball bearing, 50p for the for the um, bronze bearing slash bush. The shaft cost me £5, although I had plenty left over to do other jobs, and I used approximately £2 worth of coal for melting my brass down. So I hope that's given uh, any other Chinese shoe patch machine owners food for thought on how they can improve their machines. Um, even if you don't have one of these machines, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, please check out my other videos and subscribe to uh, to make sure you don't miss any any further modifications to this machine. All right, folks. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.